suppose we um, we drop a ball from the upper observation deck of the uh, CN Tower in Toronto. That's 450 meters above the ground. We want to estimate the instantaneous velocity of the ball exactly five seconds after it's been dropped. How fast is it falling? So I have a function for the position of the ball, right? The height of the ball above the ground after t seconds is given by this formula um, AT, 1 half AT squared plus V naught T plus S naught. Okay. A is the acceleration due to gravity. Anybody know what that is? 9.8. What's the, what are the units? Meters per second squared. Meters per second squared. Yep. Um, and so A is the acceleration due to gravity. We're measuring all of this in meters, so we're going to use meters per second squared, the negative 9.8. And V naught is your initial velocity. So if I'm if I'm holding um, a ball and I just let it go, what is its initial velocity at the moment that I release it? Zero. Good. So it has no initial velocity. And S naught is its initial height. What is its initial height at the moment I let it go? 450. Good. All right. So my function for the height of the ball is going to be 9.8 times a half is 4.9. Negative 4.9 t squared. Sure. Um, that would be a question for Ted. <laughs> yeah, it has something to do with calculus. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so... Actually, the end of this semester, I will be able to give you an amazing answer okay. <clears throat> of where that one half comes from, but I can't right now. Okay, so um, here's my function for the height of the ball t seconds after I drop it. So this gives me the height of the ball, but what they asked me about was the speed of the ball, right? Well, they said velocity, and velocity is just a synonym for speed, but also includes a direction. Okay, so I want the velocity, I have the height. Um, what, how can, can, so can I just plug a 5 in there and answer the question? That would give me the height at 5 seconds, and I want the speed. So what do I do? How can I? The slope of what? I could find the average velocity. That That's a, a good suggestion. I could figure out when does this thing hit the ground, and I could say, so over 450 feet, right, divide the distance it fell by the time it took to fall, and I would have an average speed, right? So um, average velocity, velocity average in general is going to be the change in the height or the change in position if it's something that's not falling. Change in height divided by change in time. So I could get the whole average over the whole 450 feet. What would be a, an even better way of getting the instantaneous velocity at five seconds? Alex? Yeah, so I could find an average velocity on a teeny tiny interval, right? I could say, like, um, what's the change in height over a tenth of a second, right? I could look from 5 seconds to 5.1 seconds and find the change in height, divide by the change in time, get an average velocity. So this is how I'm going to estimate it. I would do um, a change in height over a change in time, and I just want to make this change in time really small. That's how I'm going to estimate instantaneous. Okay, so, for example, I might calculate, um, like I just said, 5.1 seconds, get the height at 5.1, and the height at 5 seconds, right? So that's going to be my change in height over that tenth of a second. And then I'm going to divide by the change in time, which is one tenth. So I'm going to use my calculator so that I can 
save some time. Um, I'm going to type into Y1. If you have a graphing calculator, you can kind of follow along with this. And if you don't, GeoGebra can do this if you're doing your homework with um, GeoGebra rather than a calculator. So in Y1, I'm going to put my function for the height of the ball, negative 4.9x squared plus 450. And then I'm going to use my table function to get different Y values. Uh, actually, I'm not even going to do that. So I'm going to call up Y1 using VARS, this button VARS. Um, I can, then I'm going to choose Y variables and function, and then pick Y1. So I'm going to type in 5.1 minus VARS, Y VARS, function Y1 at 5. So graphing calculators are awesome because they know function notation. This calculator knows that when I write this, it means take 5.1, plug it into the formula that you typed into Y1. Um, hit enter, and then I'm going to divide by 0.1, my change in time, and I get negative 49.49. And what are my units on that? Meters per second, because this was a change in height divided by a change in time. The units on height are meters. Units on time was seconds, meters per second. So it's an average velocity from 5 seconds to 5.1 seconds, negative 49.49 meters per second. How could I get an even better estimate of the exact speed at 5 seconds? Make the time smaller. Yep. That would tell us the exact speed at 5 seconds. But we don't know the word derivative yet. Yeah, we don't know that either. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to do this exact same cal calculation, but over a smaller time interval. So I'm going to do find the height at 5.01 seconds. You know, I'll just find an average speed over a hundredth of a second. So I'm just going to call up my previous thing here and insert a zero. Divide by 0 0.01. And I get negative 49.049 meters per second. And then if I want an even better estimate for the exact speed at five seconds, smaller time interval. So I could do a thousandth of a second. So let's see what happens when I do that. I'm just going to put in another zero here. Divide by 0 0.01. Whoops, 0 0.001. And I get negative 49.0049. No, what? No. You said does it ever reach 49? No. That is the that is the limit. Yep. If you could take an average speed from 5 seconds to 5 seconds, right? It would be negative 49. Okay. So, <clears throat> I want to take a quick look at um, a little animation so we can see what's happening with these calculations. All right, so let's think about um, what these calculations, we'll do this the old-fashioned way. These calculations that I did here, what they represent geometrically. So <clears throat> S of 5.1 and S of 5, are those um, X or Y values on the graph of S of T? Y values, yeah. And, and 5.1 and 5, are those X or Y values? X, yeah, or T, right? So, so this is a change in Y over a change in X. Or a change in height over a change in time, but in more general terms, change in Y over change in X. What does change in Y over change in X usually used to calculate? A slope, yeah. So these um, equations, these uh, calculations that I did, are, are representing slopes. 
slopes of what? Let me see here. A graph of the height of the ball um, at time t seconds. So we've got time on the horizontal, height of the ball on the vertical. And I calculated um, a slope of a line between two points. Right? So this right here, negative 49.49, that is the slope of a line. This is a change in y over a change in x. And the two points I used were 5 comma s of 5 and 5.1 comma s of 5.1. So I'm going to just plot those two points. Okay, it doesn't know that. I got to change this to a f of x. So there's my point 5 comma f of 5. That, that gives me the height of the ball at 5 seconds. And then I'm going to do the same thing at uh, 5.1. Right next to it. Maybe I'll change my scale a little bit so we can see that better. All right, and then I calculated the slope of the line between those things. So maybe I'll make a line that connects those two. Okay, so there's a line going through A and B. What happens if I move B closer to A? It won't let me. Yeah, I'd make a slider, but which is what my animation that I wanted to show you earlier was. <laughs> So I just moved B 10 times closer to A. That line is looking an awful lot like a what? Tangent line. So it was um, just a line connecting two points on a curve, and it's looking more and more like a tangent line. So a good definition for a secant line is the line that goes through two points on a curve. Poor definition of a tangent line is a line that goes through one point. It's a poor definition because it might hit somewhere else, but I'm but uh, in general, there's a curve. Something like that is a tan is a secant line hits two points on the curve, and a tangent line would just barely touch at a single point. And it might cross again, that's why it's a bad definition, but just touching at one point is a definition of a tangent line. So the graphical interpretation of average velocity is the slope of a secant line. Right, so like for us, this might be um, five, and 5.1, time 5, time 5.1, we calculated the slope of that line. Change in y over change in x, that gave us the average velocity. But then, as you move the two points closer to each other, this line becomes a closer and closer and closer to a tangent line. Okay, so the graphical interpretation of instantaneous velocity is the slope of a tangent line. All right, so I'm going to have you pick up where you left off with the zombies. If you already finished the zombies, move on to the next page. Um, and then we, in the last seven minutes or so, we have one more demo. 
Okay, so an important um, result that I ho I'm hoping you're taking away from this class is that instantaneous velocity of a function at t equals a, some moment in time, you can calculate instantaneous velocity by looking at an average velocity, right? So f of a plus h minus f of a, that's just a change in y values, over h, which is just a change in time, small change in time. And then we look at the limit as h goes to 0. So what happens is we make that change in time smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. So does this notation make sense to people? You may not have read this far yet, and if you haven't, this might be a little confusing. But this piece of the fraction, this is just a change in position, right? Because the function f tells you position, right? So this is a change in position, and this part here, that's a change in time. And what we look at is what happens as the change in time becomes small, closer and closer and closer to zero, smaller and smaller and smaller. This fraction, f of a plus h minus f of a all over h, is called the difference quotient of the function f. And when we talk about the slope of a curve, what we mean is the slope of a tangent line to that curve. And the slope of a tangent line represents instantaneous velocity. Good. Okay, so here's a problem from last night's reading. So we're going to do some, some kind of brand new stuff. Okay, so <clears throat> suppose Ian throws a grapefruit straight up with an initial velocity of 100 feet per second from a height of 6 feet. Without a calculator, we want to find the velocity of the grapefruit one second into its flight. Okay, so A is negative um, 9.8 meters per second squared or negative 32 feet per second squared. Um, that's the acceleration due to gravity using two different units. And the height of an object, height of a falling object is given by this formula. Okay. So let's see, we, all of my given information was in feet, so I'm going to use the negative 32 number because it has feet in it. Okay, so 1 half a t squared, so I'm going to get negative 16 t squared plus v naught t. v naught is your initial velocity of 100 plus s naught, which is your initial height, which is 6. So this is a function that tells me the height of the grapefruit t seconds after Ian threw it upwards. All right, so without a calculator, I'm supposed to come up with the instantaneous velocity one second into the flight. How fast is that grapefruit traveling? All right, so one second into the flight. So velocity instantaneous, remember, is the limit as h goes to zero of s of, in this case, I'm going to use one plus h. Right, so some, some time a little bit after one second. So h is representing some small amount of time, right? Minus the position at one. If you guys could just hold your conversation until I'm done, I would appreciate it, thank you. Divided by the change in time, which is h. All right, so this is just the position a little bit after one second, minus the position at exactly one second, divided by the time it took to change position. Does that make sense? All right, and then what I'd like to know is what happens as my change in time goes to zero. What happens as h goes to zero? So I'm going to do um, a bunch of algebra here, and it's possible that you may have come up with the answer without doing all this algebra, but let's see what happens. So function notation. This just says take a 1 plus h and plug it in for all the t's, right? So I'm going to have negative 16 times 1 plus h squared plus 100 times 1 plus h plus 6. That's s of 1 plus h. I'm going to put brackets around there so pink goes to pink. All right. And then s of 1, what do you get when you plug a 1 into the original function?
negative 16 plus 100 plus 6, which is 90. So minus 90. Right? So S of 1 just replaced with a 90. Put green to make those. So you can see where that came from. All over H. So now what I want to do is I want to know what happens as H gets really, really small to this expression. So I'm going to simplify what's in the pink brackets there. Oops, I forgot to write limit as h goes to 0. OK, so I have negative 16 times when you square 1 plus h, you get 1 plus 2h plus h squared. Everybody knows, you just FOIL it, 1 plus h times 1 plus h, FOIL it. Okay. And then I'm going to distribute that 100. So I have 100 plus 100h plus 6 minus 90 all over h. Distribute the negative 16. And I get negative 16 minus 32h. I don't have enough room to do this. Hold on. Okay. Limit as h goes to zero, I have negative 16 minus 32h minus 16h squared plus 100 plus 100h plus 6 plus 90. All over h. Minus 90. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so now I just combine my like terms. I have negative 16 plus 100 plus 6 minus 90. All right, just look at all my constants. And what do those add up to? Zero. They just go away. Right, add those up and it adds up to zero. Okay, so there, there, there. Yes, it is. OK, so plain old h's, I have a negative 32 and a 100. So I'm left with negative 16h squared plus 68h all over h. OK, what hap so uh, I have an h in both terms in the numerator. I could factor one of them out. So I'm going to have h times negative 16h plus 68. Those cancel, right? OK. Now, what happens as h gets really, really small? What happens to this term? It's closer and closer to 0. And all I'm left with is 68 feet per second. And this group got it without doing any of this mess that I just did.